noche y los barcos de canela yo me mancharía entera por salvar la tu bandera yo me mancharía entera por salvar la tu bandera ah, en la mar hay una torre en la torre hay una ventana Allá posa una fija que a los marineros ama. Allá posa una fija que a los marineros ama. Dime, niña, ¿dónde vienes? Que te quiero conocer a la luz de la farola. Todo el mundo me conoce. En España había muchos ricos y lo más eran joyeros. ¿Ya sabes lo que es joyero? Había un viejo que no laboró más, dejó el magazín y a poco a poco vendió las joyas y ese mozo se mantenía. Al cabo al cabo le quedó un anillo muy, muy, muy importante, muy valoroso. Se Juan de muchos a venderlo, ninguno lo pudo pagar porque demandaba muchas pelas. Se fue ante el rey, dijo, eso es lo que lo puedo mercar del rey. El rey no lo pudo mercar, la mujer le plazó mucho, mucho más, dijo, yo no poseo este canal de paras para mercarlo. Había un ambasador judío, se llamaba Don Isaac Abravanel, que lo llevó allá, ¿cuánto le demandó? Le pagó. Eso le mercó para la mujer. Después de un mes hubo, en el palacio del rey hubo un balo, muy importante. Estaba invitada la, la ambasador con la mujer. Ella se metió el anillo bueno. La reina, cuando lo vio, se enervó mucho, se metió en coloral y dijo al marido, tú, un rico rey, rey no puedes marcar un anillo. Ese sal, sucio judío lo marcó, dijo para la mujer. De ahora en adelante los judíos se van a ir de aquí. Y los envió de España. Y los recibió la Turquía. La Turquía los recibió a brazos abiertos. Después, el rey turco le envió a decir al Dayá, tú lo hiciste, tu país prove y lo hiciste el, el país mío rico. Porque los que venían todos, judíos todos los ricos. When Mehmed II conquered Istanbul in 1453, there were Karaites and Romaniot, or Greek-speaking Jews, already living there. Later in the 16th century, at the height of Ottoman power, the Sephardim played an important role in the empire's affairs as court physicians and foreign advisors to the Sultan. The most famous were the Portuguese converso who returned to Judaism as Joseph Nasi and his aunt, Doña Gracia Mendes, the banker, philanthropist, and patron of Jewish scholarship, both of whom became legends in their own time. In Mozart's opera, Abduction from the Seraglio, Sultan Selim III, who allegedly served as the inspiration for the Pasha, had as his court composer a Jew by the name of Isaac Fresco. The story of the abduction from the Seraglio ends on a good note. The Pasha grants freedom to Constanza, who is then reunited with her beloved Spanish captain, Belamonte. Cristianos, todos otomanos, nos tomimos de las manos. The song Por la Amor de la Turquía dates from the Young Turk Revolution of 1908, when all of Turkey's minorities worked together to initiate reforms modeled after those of the French Revolution's ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity. The Ottoman Empire was a plural society. 
Muslims, Christians, and Jews lived and worked side by side. The framework within which the non-Muslims functioned was called the Millet system. It was basically a series of ad hoc arrangements made with the Ottoman authorities, which gave them a degree of legal autonomy and authority. At the Shishli synagogue, named after the quarter where a majority of Istanbul's Jews live, the men had gathered to celebrate the festival of Sukkot, the holiday which commemorates the Israelite sojourn in the wilderness after leaving Egypt and the fall harvest. Istanbul's synagogues are well attended on special holidays. After the Sukkot service is complete, the men gather in the synagogue sukkah, a temporarily constructed shelter decorated with fruits of the harvest, to share a symbolic breakfast. The song Los Caminos de Sirkeje, The Streets of Sirkeje, expressed the idea that these streets are full of opportunities for earning a living. Once the center of a grain market, Sirkeje is the old business district of Istanbul, where it is said one can hear the economic heartbeat of Turkey. A majority of Istanbul's Jews work here and in the surrounding districts. <laughs> Simon Tov, who sells watches, told me in a broken Spanish that the Jews had come 500 years ago during the time of the Inquisition. We have no complaints. We live quite well, he said. Most Jews respond favorably when asked how they feel about living in Turkey. But privately, some express doubts. They live in a paradoxical world of contentment modulated by misgivings of what the future may bring. Jewish celebrations like Brit Milah, Pidyom, and Bar Mitzvah, while essential to the preservation of a Jewish identity, also serve to maintain clear boundaries between the Jews and the Muslims. The Brit Milah parties are announced in one of Istanbul's leading newspapers, and anyone wishing to attend may do so. However, Muslim Turks seldom do. Why? because Turkish-Jewish relationships remain on a public level and less personal. Sami Cohen remarked that he would not have invited his best Muslim friend to his son's ritual circumcision because it was seen as a religious event and therefore a private event. As is common practice in countries of the diaspora, Jewish first and sometimes second names are rendered in the language of the host country. So in Turkey, Moiz is Murat or Musa, and Solomon is Suleiman. A name that combined the best of both worlds was Öz Kohen, meaning the pure Kohen. I sought out the old places where the Jews of Istanbul had lived as a way of finding the traces of their Judeo-Spanish culture. The Jewish population had long since moved from places like Balat, Askoy, and the Kule Zibi. They had left for the newer and more modern quarters of Istanbul. My inclination was to select the traditional, nostalgic, and folkloric aspects of their culture. Most people in the community preferred to emphasize their modernity, and they didn't share my interest in those old neighborhoods. Rachel Ben Habib Levy, whom we heard earlier singing La Serena, and her brother Leon, both former residents of Balat, 
set out with Dr. Musa Albuquerque and Lawrence to visit the remains of the Castoria synagogue. When there was a flourishing community here, what kind of songs, sayings, that is, local folklore did they have? I remember one about a donkey. Oh yes, a donkey that stays quiet is considered to be a clever one. Well, what does that mean? It's like a rabbi who until he opens his mouth is thought to be great. What about doctors? Same can be said for them. One who talks too much says little. Your father was a rabbi? Yes, he was the chief rabbi of Balat. Turkey's chief rabbi, David Aseo, accompanied by members of the community council, arrived at the Ahrida synagogue of Balat on Purim, a holiday commemorating the deliverance of the Jews in Persia, as related in the biblical book of Esther. In Judeo-Spanish, the rabbi told the story of Purim, pointing out the importance of remembering the past. Some of his words were incomprehensible to the younger people, as they no longer spoke or understood Judeo-Spanish. Turkish has replaced Judeo-Spanish and French among the younger generation and has become the vehicle for cultural integration into the mainstream of Turkish life. Many of the people who were gathered at the synagogue that morning were either former residents of Balat or children and grandchildren of those who had lived there. Despite the general desire to be part of the country's present and future, these people clearly signaled by their presence a reaffirmation of their Jewish past. It's been two years since you loved me. It's been two years since you tricked me. You don't know my grief, but I will suffer until I die. Karen Gerson and her friends Yavuz Izet and Selim formed a musical group Los Pasharos Sephardi, singing and preserving the Judeo-Spanish song tradition. What we are interested in really is that uh, we as a community don't lose this whole tradition that goes back 500 years. And uh, until the beginning of this century, all these songs and musical culture was part of the community life, was, was part of everyday life. People got together and because they didn't have much to do, they sang songs. But now, unfortunately, this whole tradition is disappearing with the nuclear family type arising and big city life and fast life, everything. We are interested in is getting these songs back from the old, the oldest generation. Really, now the only people over 70 know them. Thank you.
One of Izet's favorite songs is Mi Padre Era de Francia. It's a humorous cantica dating from the late 19th or early 20th century. The song deals with the plight of a woman whose family marries her off to a demanding husband at an early age. In a dream, she imagines a younger man who is attracted to her as she goes to fetch water.